It's now quite clear that there are objects in our sky able to move against the wind at considerable speed without any discernible means of propulsion. The UAP task force has been studying 18 such cases, mostly from the last two years. But the best data we have still comes from the 2004 Nimitz Tic Tac encounter. And that data tells an amazing tale. The radar data reportedly shows an object moving from above 80,000 feet to 20,000 feet in 0.78 seconds. That's over 100,000 miles per hour, 136 times the speed of sound. These speeds are corroborated by what the pilots in this counter observed. The objects zipped out of their field of view within a second. This corresponds to an object moving anywhere from 35,000 miles per hour to 280,000 miles per hour. Mach 46 to Mach 367. Even the low estimate here would blow the mind of any aeronautics engineer. When you hear of supersonic flight, an amazing achievement, we're talking one to five times the speed of sound. There are now whispers of secret craft capable of hypersonic speed, Mach 5 to 10. At these speeds, it's really more or less a flying missile. Wings and control surfaces need to be small and aerodynamic, or else the craft would literally break apart. Atmospheric friction subject the craft to extreme heat as well. Above this, we have high hypersonic at Mach 10 to 25, and then re-entry speeds for anything above that. And there are some man-made objects that operate at these speeds, but they all operate in more or less the same fashion. Shoot a rocket straight up into near orbit and cruise back down at extreme high speeds. At these speeds, the atmospheric friction causes a ball of fire, even in the upper atmosphere. The craft needs extreme heat shielding to survive. Now imagine a craft going from zero to 30 Mach right before your eyes within a second. Not even considering the unimaginable G forces, forces that would cause any man-made object to literally disintegrate. This is above atmosphere re-entry speeds at sea level. Forget the lack of discernible propulsion. The fact that it didn't leave a trail of fire behind it defies our understanding of the world. But it doesn't quite defy our understanding of physics. Einstein's theory of relativity allows for space-time to be warped such that gravity could be manipulated. Many speculate that this is what allows the tic-tac to move through space without the expected environmental interactions. Miguel Alcubierre introduced the concept of such a warp drive to academia, and since then there have been others that iterated on it. But even the latest iterations rely on incredible amounts of energy and perhaps unachievable engineering breakthroughs. So objects that move like the Tic Tac are theoretically possible, but current theories say you need the mass or energy of an object the size of Jupiter. You'd think we notice if that kind of power was being burnt up in our atmosphere. But we might be approaching the physics from the wrong direction. A new approach has shown amazing promise to explain not only the physics of UAP, but the physics of everything. Stephen Wolfram is the man behind Mathematica and Wolfram Alpha, which powers the iOS AI Siri. And he may have literally figured out how our universe works. If anyone were to do this, you'd expect it from him. Born in 1959, he wrote three books on particle physics before his 14th birthday. At 19 years old, he had numerous publications published in scientific journals and was awarded a PhD in particle physics at Caltech. Two years later, at age 21, he would join the faculty there, becoming colleague to former advisor Richard Feynman. He'd received the MacArthur Fellowship Award that year as well becoming the youngest ever to win this genius grant, given to those showing extraordinary originality and dedication in their creative pursuits and a marked capacity for self-direction. 
Wolfram would spend the next 20 years studying computational systems. This would accumulate in 2002 with him publishing A New Kind of Science. The main idea of the book, an idea like many other great ideas that sounds obvious in retrospect, is that complex behavior can arise from very simple rules. Wolfram showed this with cellular automata, a fancy phrase meaning a row of cells, cells like in a spreadsheet, just something that can be either on or off. And these cells update automatically based on some very simple instruction set. We can put these cells in rows and give them all the same instructions for updating themselves. At each tick of the clock, each cell will look to the left, look to the right, and look at themselves and, based on those inputs, decide what to change their state to. Every cell will do this at the same time, so we get a line of cells that turns on and off at each time step. If we plot the history of these cells, with each new iteration appearing below the last, we can see very interesting patterns emerge. These are the systems Wolfram studied, and he found one rule set. Rule 110 produced extremely complex behavior. In fact, the patterns that emerged were completely unpredictable. If you filled in some initial cells and applied the rule for 10, 100, or 1,000 generations, there's no way of predicting what the end state will be. You simply have to apply the rule for 10, 100, 1,000 generations. There are no shortcuts. Wolfram argues that systems like this are the upper bound of complexity in the universe. These are systems that cannot be shortcut. You simply have to run the entire system to get the answer. Wolfram calls this concept the principle of computational irreducibility. And here is where the new kind of science comes in. Science, to this point, is all about finding pockets of reducibility, finding equations that will let us shortcut a system without watching it explicitly play out. Things like Einstein's theory of relativity, allowing us to predict the effects of mass on space-time. Wolfram argues that while these approaches have served us very well, we are now at a point where we can approach it from the opposite direction. We can literally iterate through the potential rule sets of the universes and determine exactly what is driving things like relativity and quantum physics. But after Wolfram published A New Kind of Science, he backed away from scientific pursuits and went into private industry, where he also had great success. Now, almost 20 years later, Wolfram is back at the forefront of science. In 2020, he launched the Wolfram Physics Project. This project is based on a much more general form of cellular automata, where cells can look to more than just their immediate neighbors. It's analyzed in the context of graphs and graph theory, but the concepts are the same. There are a list of possible rules that could be used to update and evolve these graphs. Wolfram says he had been studying these concepts for over a year at the time of the project's announcement. He had this to say then. Too much has worked. Too many things have fallen into place. We don't know if the precise details of how our rules are set up are correct, or how simple or not the final rules may be, but at this point, I am certain that the basic framework we have is telling us, fundamentally, how physics work. A year later, on April 14th, 2021, Wolfram gave an update to the project. A year later, it's looking even better. We've been steadily understanding more and more about the structure and implications of our models. And they continue to fit beautifully with what we already know about physics, particularly connecting with some of the most elegant existing approaches, strengthening and extending them, and involving the communities that have developed them. The different possible rule sets generate different possible universes. Wolfram even has a registry of notable universe models. You can go there yourself and look at them. If you ran one of these rule sets for 14 billion years, Wolfram thinks you'd literally get what is happening right now. You and me. Of course, we don't have that kind of time. We can't use these rules to peer into the future, 
because that would involve generating the universe within the universe faster than the universe can generate itself. But there are inferences we can make about physics in these universes, and there are consistencies between them. Things like relativity and quantum entanglement can be demonstrated as emergent properties of these universes, which is mind-blowing. It's why Wolfram speaks with such enthusiasm about the topic. If we have the source code of the universe at our disposal, which we might now have, we may be able to figure out completely unintuitive tricks of nature. This may be how we figure out how gravity really works, a theory of everything that will unite classical and quantum mechanics by showing us how these properties emerge from the rules of the universe itself. Perhaps there are properties of gravity that are unobservable through our normal view of the universe. This may someday explain how the tic-tac object can move through our atmosphere at incomprehensible speeds. Perhaps the two-year update will be delivered by Wolfram after zipping around the world in a Wolfram physics-powered tic-tac. I'll, I'll leave you with one more thing to chew on. Wolfram apparently waited 17 years to advance his new kind of science after publishing his book. The stated reason is that he was waiting for computer technology to catch up so that he could iterate through more universes for meaningful results. But he seemed pretty darn sure that the project would be successful when he launched it back in 2020. What if he had actually been working on the project in secret with government computing technology since 2002? Maybe he is sure of extraordinary results because he has already seen them. The Wolfram Physics Project may be part of a broader disclosure of secrets that some are already clued in on. But take that last bit with a, a large grain of salt. There's certainly no evidence of a secret Wolfram Physics Project. And the public one is interesting enough to be extremely excited for. I hope I've convinced you of that. And thank you for watching. If you've subscribed, thanks for that as well. And one more thanks to everyone who hits that thumbs up button. Stay tuned here, rather than be squitting, for videos on the un and underknown every two weeks. I'll see you next time.